Welcome to the Financial Flossing Podcast with Ross Brannan, guiding dental professionals to a brighter future. Ross Brannan is a financial advisor who knows it's not just about your teeth. He helps dental practice owners protect and maximize today's cash flow to plan for tomorrow's cash needs. Find him at rossbrannan.com. On the show, he brings together experts to help dental professionals looking to make smart money decisions to grow their income, turn their retirement goals into reality, and improve their lives. And now, here's your host, Ross Brannan. Welcome to the show. Today, we have Minnie Suri, co-founder and CEO of Velmini, an AI company in the dental space. Now, she has an amazing biography, but I am not going to read it all just because she's way smarter than me. She has an MBA from MIT. She worked at City for 20 years. She worked at Uber as the head of intelligent automation. She worked at Core AI, and she is a board member at Thai Silicon Valley. And now she's this co-founder and CEO of Velmini. Mini, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ross. It's my pleasure. So, Dumb it down for us and tell us what Velmini does for dentists. Great point. So Velmini, the name is, it means robot in Icelandic. We are truly an AI and automation company. AI, because we use computer vision to really analyze any kinds of x-rays, whether it's 2D, 3D, to improve the experience of dentists, and for a better patient outcome. What we have seen is inconsistent x-rays reviews causes dentists to miss pathologies. It's not that the dentists don't know what they're doing, it's just that they're busy. They're busy people, they're running from looking at the dent, uh, looking at the patients and they get distracted. They get tired, whereas AI doesn't take a break, doesn't get tired and is able to identify findings which dentists may choose to treat or not, but at least it's pointed out to there. So basically, Wellmini is both for the dentist. Wellmini also offers a platform. We believe that AI is the future, and that's what Wellmini is about. So let me simplify this here, make sure I understand. So my dentist takes an x-ray. He's busy. His wife is texting him or his, her husband is texting her. He's got two or three employees calling his name. He looks at my x-ray and maybe there's a trouble spot, but he just glances at the x-ray and glances at the x-ray and nothing is glaring standing out. But there's something that he, if he spent the time, he would see, but he didn't have the time and just because life is busy. What AI does, AI looks at that x-ray and basically, for lack of a better term, has big red arrows pointing at the trouble spots. So the patient gets an area, something taken care of that needs to be taken care of, and the doctor collects more revenue because they're doing more procedures, correct? Correct. We say that you miss a filling, you land up into root canal. So what we really want is the dentist to really not miss those early warnings or early intervention and be able to see that. And that's where we come in. And also, you know, from legal standpoint of view, it's well documented, it's out there, and hopefully dentists don't miss it. And that's- it's you said earlier, it's really good that so a new dentist fresh out of residency or, or dental school may not be as experienced and may not necessarily know what to look for, even though they were taught in school, maybe they miss it in the real world, but this helps fix that problem. Absolutely, Ross. I mean, think of it, students coming out of COVID batch who didn't have chance to do a lot of hands-on. We really want to make sure we provide that support system um, that these students can feel more confident when they're taking these kind of cases. So what we say, AI is not just helping the dentist, but also educating the dentist. We just want to make sure they feel more confident. They have, I would say, intelligent pair of eyes next to them. And now they can sort of like you know, feel more confident that this better patient outcome, they're not able to miss things. And in case it is, they can always go back and refer to what was done by the AI. So it doesn't it doesn't go away. So I think that's very important because A, just in time, but from historical perspective, they have all the AI findings right before them. Well, I, go ahead, I'm sorry. 
I just want to add one thing, Ross. Not necessarily AI is 100% correct, right? AI is also learning. When AI is not able to detect, which is which can happen, we have a feedback loop. The dentist can go and mark that the AI was not able to find, which means at the back, we look into what's why the AI missed. We can put it in the, you know, we it gets analyzed by the radiologist and then it gets into the AI tra- training mod. And eventually AI becomes smarter and smarter. And the good thing is what we say, we bring global learning to local dentists. What that means is if a dentist A had missed something and the finding got into the AI learning, now the other dentists get the benefit of it. Yeah, so the AI is always learning. So when it does make a mistake, as long as you give it a, give it feedback and correct whatever, it can actually learn from that. So, and, you know, obviously we're discussing this in March of 2023. And, I mean, the biggest news story this year has been AI, whether it's chat GPT or, or Microsoft's AI or whatever. So, I mean, it's a, 23, 2023 is the year of AI. But you, you address, so people might say, well, what if it makes a mistake? But you're you've, you're already addressing that, and the reality is they should be smart enough to know if it is a mistake, and give it proper feedback. Now you've had a lot of dentists use this. What is the what is the feedback they're giving you? So the feedback from the dentist A was obviously it was very positive because this is something they felt really helped them. Now I would say there are different categories of dentists. There are high innovators who are very enthusiastic and they love what the new technology is. There are dentists who are overwhelmed by technology, right? Because it's something new for them to learn. And how do we make sure that category of dentists are also comfortable using it. And that's why second dentist is what we made something very simple, easy for them to learn and understand AI. The feedback was obviously the simple interface. They wanted something which was very, very clear to them, easy to understand, self-intuitive. They could learn on their own and that's what we achieved. We barely had any webinars, seminars. We gave them the second dentist with the videos. They got it and they learned it and they used it. And I think that was a big testament for us because if a dentist who's non-technical can use and understand AI and the output, I think that's the biggest feedback. Yeah, that's exciting. So talk a little bit about like, if I'm a dentist and I like this, you, so you have second dentist, you, you have two kind of products, am I right? Two products. So talk about how that works, which one is for the right person and explain how that works, please. So we, as I said, second dentist is free product where we allow for people to learn. We allow even dental students to learn. We have opened it up to anybody who wants to use. And in fact, there are dental students who are basically using this for their thesis, for learning, for, you know, just to get themselves AI sort of, uh, you know, literate. Now, there's a second product that we are going through uh, FDA clearance, which we call it uh, Wellmini for Dentist, which basically will have more pathologies, more finding, and that would become their subscription-based product in the dental office. Now, the thing is, Ross, what we want to do is it's a cloud-based platform. It's a cloud-based product. We integrate very well with the imaging system, with most practice management system. We do not want to disrupt the workflow. Now, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and what it really means is the workflow remains the same. The dentist, it becomes very seamless. Right when, when the x-rays get taken, it gets uploaded in a matter of seconds in our Wellmini, in Wellmini cloud. Now, the dentist can choose to accept, reject. And once they accept the findings, it gets uploaded, updated in the practice management software. They can print it as a report. Voila, they have everything. And if they ever want to go into historical visits, they'll have everything. So things are very, very seamless and easy for them to follow. Now, obviously, this is being used with general dentists. Are you being used with endodontist or periodontist or anybody else like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. We are we are also looking into all the speciality. I did not mention that not only 2D 
which is by being periapical, we are also pouring into 3D. We feel 3D is the future. 3D, uh, and we want to be uh, leading the pact in 3D because general dentists are also buying CBCT. CBCT offers a lot more data, and we know it's very overwhelming for a dentist if they cannot sort of diagnose what they don't know. So we are able to do all the AI and, you know, segmentation, annotation, and other areas that can make the dentist a lot more comfortable now. So we feel that 3D is the future, 2D is what they use. Absolutely, we support both. So this is uh, pretty fascinating what AI is able to do. What do you see the future being for AI? So, I mean, in Obviously, I'm not a dentist, but you're you're basically spotting problem areas that need to be treated in the mouth. But what's the next level of AI, what it could do? Like what, you know, fast forward five years, what will Velmini be doing? Yeah. So what I feel is with AI and automation, lots day-to-day repeatable tasks can be taken by AI and automation. We feel the dentist and the hygienist or whoever, the dental staff, they should be taking care of more complex problem. They should be treating the problem a lot more quickly so that the patient obviously, you know, get treated right on time. They don't need to come back again and again. The idea about AI is also human beings are, you know, it's what we see in even in other industry, which are I would say quite ahead. And we've seen that these kind of automation tools, we started automation probably uh, tens of 15 years back, right? Um, what we found is repeatable, boring tasks, which they see again and again, that leads to attrition. It leads to people getting burnt out. We see dentists getting burnt out. If you think of it, uh, hygiene is getting burnt out. Why? Because they're doing the same thing. If AI can pick those kind of things, help them so that they are focused more on the more complex problem. We are freeing their time. If we free their time, they can upskill, reskill into something more. General practitioners may be able to take more cases. They They may now get time to really educate into something which is more useful because they just didn't have time before. Hygienists may be doing something else. They could be a change maker. So what we feel AI and automation will enable them to really do something which is much more of value to human, to to patients. And AI is, we all are at the tip of iceberg. There is so much that AI can see. I believe that we can, you know, we always joke, the dentists have to be in dental office. We say, why dentists have to be in dental office? They could do a lot of work also remotely. I see where AI is going to take the dentists. It's going to let them do things remotely. We will not have specialists in every office, and that's not possible. We'll basically end up having specialists in certain offices and patient visiting satellite offices where they can really interact and be able to understand the cases and be able to take this forward. So there is so many use cases that we think will happen. It is truly disrupting and it is truly, it's going to change the way the care happens. And again, you know, five years is not a long time, but the way this AI, as you rightly said, this is a year of AI. We have made leaps and bound, you know, progress in AI, but you'll see this is going to continue growing. And and I'm so glad that dental or dental space is opening up. They're very open. Uh, they're they're in, interested to learn more. And I think we need to continue driving that. And that's why, Ross, which I really appreciate is through your podcast, bringing us, you know, bringing people like us and, you know, spreading this message is very important. So thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. So it's obviously amazing in what it can do, but it's not perfect. So what can it not do? What are the what are the expectations that are a little unwarranted with, you know, what you guys are doing? I, I always say that human in loop is important right? AI has its limitations. AI is always learning, but you need a human because nobody can replace a human, human judgment, because 
What AI is doing today is only one facet or asset, which is radiology. You also have human intuition. You also look into the patient's mouth. You also look into other things that the patient um, that you see when you're face to face with that patient. Those things, obviously, at least the radiology or the diagnostic part of AI is not taking care, right? That is only a support. So I am sure there are other facets of AI which will come and we'll pick that up because AI is, again, we may be using AI in different ways, like period charting and you know uh, probing and so many other ways that we can build the AI systems. However, I truly believe till AI uh, algorithms are very, very robust, it has to be reviewed by someone. So we call it supervised learning. You know, unsupervised learning, especially in healthcare, I think will take us some time. So that's where I feel, wherever it's patient touch, having someone review things, it's still quicker than somebody really going ground up and missing things. It's still much better. We call it aided or, you know, assisted. And that's what I see right now. Do you have any documentation on the dentists who have been using it on the increase in revenue they have gotten from using it? Absolutely. I'll tell you this. And we've done the study with with several dentists. If we can save a dentist or a hygienist even 10 to 15 minutes, what it really means, A, it reduces their bottom line, which is reduces their cost. Now, the hygienist can see not just two patients, maybe three patients, right, in a day, or dentists can now see more patients in a day, which A, increases their revenue. Second, if we are able to find certain, you know, pathologies of finding that they can treat now, that means also helps them increase the revenue. So we see that both ways they can increase the revenue. And the other thing is more importantly, is they're building trust. They're not losing a patient. Think of it, getting a new patient into a, a practice takes a lot longer than having a repeated patient. It's the, the cost of retaining your customer or cost of retaining your patient. And that's important. Once you build the trust, you have the patient for a lifetime. And that's very, very important. Um, so I feel that with these tools, these AI automation, where the data can be curated, data can be be of high quality, which means now the care quality improves tremendously. All these things not only increases your, I mean, decreases your cost, increases your revenue, it increases more importantly your credibility. And that's very important for a dentist and also from the patient perspective. Yeah, I just don't see why th this is not something that every dentist would want to use because it's basically a second set of eyes to check if, in case there's anything, anything you miss, which will help the patient, but also increase the revenue. So to me, this is a, this is a no brainer. Now I understand some people aren't tech people and they're not going to want to do that, or they're not early adopters. I get that, but this eliminates the human error of missing something. And if it's about taking care of patients, I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't do this. True. And I think it's a very simple training, very simple video to watch. It's not something that they have to do an additional click. It's all clicks. It's all out there. It's very visual. If a patient can understand, and I'm sure dentists can definitely understand what the AI is talking about. So if a dentist wants to you know, use some of your solutions, how do they do that? So they can actually go to our website. Uh, we have an engage area where they just, um, which is www.wellmini.ai. They can get in touch with us um, and we get in touch with the, with the dentist and we basically follow through with them and then help them understand what they're looking for and get them to learn what AI is. And that's where we have a complete success, customer success team, which is very, um, uh, you know, it's actually the dentist turn technologists, which is very important because these dentists understand what the dentists need. And at the same time, they're technologists because they understand technology. So we have a combo of such uh, people who really work and deal with the dental community so they can really understand and explain them how to use the AI. So obviously come to our website, they can connect with us 
um, you know, or send an email at info at wellmini.com. So either way. Now, is there any last things that I didn't bring up, I didn't ask that you want to make sure people hear? So, Ross, I do want to bring up one thing. For me, Wellmini is, and I say that very clearly, will achieve its unicorn mark when we make an impact on 1 billion people to improve their oral health. I'm not saying people here only in cities or people or or the patient in the privileged areas, but people in the fields, in remote area. Only way that we can make an impact is through software and through AI. There is no other way we can scale the dentist that quickly. It takes years and years of making a dentist. AI can definitely do the groundwork. It can definitely identify things which are important for 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 a patient care and that's where i feel wellmini is about and i'm passionate about doing this i'm passionate about bringing this dental care to the people who do not have access well i tell you this has been a fascinating conversation i knew 2023 was the year of ai but i didn't expect to hear about it in the dental in the dental world and i'm sure i'm going to hear about it in another world that i wasn't expecting either but this has been a fascinating conversation thank you so much for coming on Thank you, Ross. Thanks for your time. And it was really lovely having this conversation on AI with you and um, hope we can make a difference. Thank you again. You've been listening to the Financial Flossing Podcast with Ross Brennan. This has been another episode of Financial Flossing with Ross Brannan, guiding dental professionals to a brighter future. If you liked what you heard, consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. For more on Ross Brannan, visit rossbrannan.com. Ross Brannan is a registered representative of Coastal Equities, Inc., and investment advisory representative of Coastal Investment Advisors, Inc. Investment advisory services are offered through Coastal Investment Advisors, Inc., and securities are offered through Coastal Equities, Inc. Member FINRA, SIPC, 1201 North Orange Street, Suite 729, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801.